welcome back to Reintro, the new Brown Order. Me and Shri are back, and we're going to be discussing the part two, or actually our primary topic focus today. Uh, but before we get started, Shri was asking how my kids are doing, and I want to start by saying my kids have moved up in swimming from level three to level four. So, ah, congratulations! I'm so job. proud of them. I, I I knew what they were gonna do. Like as soon as we went to Cancun. I was watching them. I'm like, yo, they got them very good. They got them very yeah. good, and very fast. Like, very good and very fast. And I was like, I think they're ready. So when they came back, when they had the session with their regular teacher, I was like, I think they're ready to take the next test. He's like, if you think so, he goes, tell them to do the evaluation. I was like, okay. I told them, I'm like, yo, I want to do it. They're like, we're going to do it next week. I told my girls, so I'm like, you got to prepare. I'm like, just do it. And they're like, what if you can't do it? I'm like, that's okay. If you fail, you fail. But I don't think you will. Um, just, you know, do your best. That's it. Oh, man, they killed it. They, <laughs> oh, man. I, it's like, even to the point where there's this one move. They were like, they, you have to do, the lifeguard has to see them do these certain moves in order for them to move up. And there's somebody else doing the evaluation, and they're like, "Oh, do this, do that," and the teacher is basically there to help and you know help with whatever the thing is. So this is what do they learn? Uh, do they learn freestyle or do they learn breaststroke or do they learn butterfly? Now they're gonna do that. So for okay. the basic is being comfortable jumping in the pool, uh, holding your breath inside the water for five, learning your uh, strokes. Five minutes. Five seconds. That's impro- Oh, okay. That's good. Five five minutes. What are you trying to drown my kids? <laughs> no, I I don't know what's the basic. And I've never taken a so, class. So like... um, kicking your feet, uh, learning how to get back to uh, the edge, floating on your back, rolling over, uh, swim nice. from swim halfway, uh, diving down and getting something like you know going down and picking something up. Uh, nice. Other water game. So there's a lot of things. So um, there's a point where the she t- asked Elena to do something, and when Elena did it, the, even the trainer, uh, the 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 teacher, he was like, he, like he was so shocked that it was so dope. It's just you could see it in the face, and then um, he's cool and stuff. Uh, so after it was done, uh, when she walked away before the class even ended, he looks at me and goes. And I'm just uh-huh. like, yeah. I'm like, they passed. Mm-hmm. And then somebody ended up shitting in the pool. Oh, so, man. So they had to get out. So their test lasted 10 minutes, but they passed. Uh, okay. So it was a very big one. Serena, Ariana was there too. So they had fun, you know, with their cousins there. Um, and they, they get to pass. So then they did level four stuff. And um, it was every Saturday they have it. Now they're gonna have it this Saturday as well too. The second class. I gotta actually make up a class. Um, but they did it. It was like serious stuff. Um, yeah. Like holding the baseboard and practicing with one hand. Uh, keeping your chin more down and then doing more fl- uh, like you know forward motion. There's a lot more things to do. So I'm excited for that, and they're excited too. They like we had nice. fun doing it. So, like this is my favorite thing. I think this has been my most proudest moment um, as a daddy. They did ballet, and I'm a dancer. Yeah. I love dancing and stuff. And even when I'm driving, music's on. I'm dancing. Doesn't matter. I love music. Music makes me move. And girls doing ballet. You're beauty. Girls, yes, I've absolutely. Girls doing ballet, it was more for them, more for the dancer and them. My biggest one wanted to do hip hop, but she loved ballet and she stuck to it. They did it, but swimming is more for me. Um, mm. I'm not a great swimmer. I can survive myself. I cannot like. Don't depend on me to save you. Uh, we probably both end up dying together. That's mm. the higher chance. So. We survived somehow um, doing crazy shenanigans. Yeah. And when we were kids, we didn't have the thought process of right and wrong. We just wanted whatever yeah, our penis or oh, whatever our penis was telling us to do. So, guys, <laughs> guys brain is down there, really. So, um, 
my thing is they're gonna get older one day and they're going to go party pool beach whatever it is they're kids it's inevitable we have done that shit and mm -hmm. even if, if if it doesn't happen great but the chance it does because right now it's 50 50 and the chance it does and i'm pretty sure they're gonna go to beach and pool and all that shit very much a lot because they fucking love swimming and shit might as well have the tactics to the skills yes yes of course it's like a whole it's like driving road. or riding a bicycle because you hear this tragic tragedy so often that this person died by swimming like fucking oh man matthew perry just you know oh died that by was drowning a um apparently there was a lot of hints of him going through like you know he was a loner he was alone and this dude was making like 20 million dollars a year basically of the residuals of friends so he was caking mm -hmm. it he was making money friends is one of the greatest if not the greatest show of all time arguably mm -hmm. um yeah it's not but it is entertaining it, it is what is definitely one of the top period one of the top in anywhere world. in the world not just america anywhere in the world friends is huge it's icon it's an iconic show mm -hmm. it is one of the ones of coming of age and Chandler Jones, uh, Chandler Jones, Chandler Bing, uh, Chandler Jones is actually a football player. Chandler Bing, who was my favorite character on the show. Mm. Uh, he was hilarious. I loved his sarcasm. Him and Monica were my favorite. Like, I watched Friends many times, and I, like, you know, Monica and Chandler are like me and my wife, basically, the way I see it. My wife is Monica, me, free, nerdy, all that shit. She's Monica, and I'm the goofy dumbass, which is me, Chandler. Typical boy. Yeah, so. Man, whatever you say. It hits home. His death hits home. Like him drowning himself. So, like I was saying, it's such a important tool to have. But now, when we are talking about this, I this can pivot to the serious topic because as much as Chandler being Matthew Perry's death hits home um don't have the strength or don't have the courage or don't have the will to mourn for him even though he has done oh it has been part of my life where I actually looked at his character or something played as my own personal sure. whatever it is you see yourself in the character or you when just see the character in yourself. You don't have the time to mourn or even think about this when the world is burning. Mm. And is burning bad. And is burning in front of us. Is burning live. Is burning everywhere you see. You look left, you look right. Is burning. And the shitty part about it is we're helping it burn. And why I say this is because our tax dollars are funding funding this it's funding the genocide the murder that's happening every single minute probably it seems like it there's over 9,000 people dead so for those who don't know October 7 Hamas um, did a terror attack in Israel killing a thousand people and Israel claimed to be one of, if not the safest country in the world, security wise. Clearly not. And this was like a slap on Netanyahu's face. Um, which made them retaliate and use all of Western media to say, hey, Hamas did this terrorist, organized, terrorist attack and we're going to retaliate. We've seen this before. We've seen this where an action of a few makes hundreds of thousands of people suffer. When 9-11 happened over here, actions of a few put a spotlight on every single brown person, not just Muslim, brown, Sikh, Hindu, 
it doesn't matter if people americans can't fucking tell the difference neither can you european they can they don't know the difference so anybody of that skin color even some mexicans harassed be jumped killed many islamophobia all that if you want to say it it has happened and it, i feel like it is happening again and we all saw this coming we've been talking about the state of i want to i want to cut you off right there it, it's happening with asians too where the hatred towards china is very strong in america but they they're beating up people who are thai who are vietnamese and stuff like because they look asian you know what i mean so yeah, just to yeah. add that on there yeah, no, no. Uh, the hate crime happens a lot everywhere but i'm i'm just trying to say we're repeating the same shit again but we saw this coming everybody that's been paying attention i've known about this state for the state of palestine versus israel for over two decades probably my entire lifetime we've known about this this is something that started before my parents were even conceived and this i think this has been going on for 75 thousands 70, of years bro. no 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 74 years so what happened this is, has been talked about in the bible too bro it's it's, it's that talked in, it's, yeah, it's in it's, the bible it's talked in the, in the bible but what happened is it was originally the country of palestine and because region i wouldn't say country i would it say was region it, it was called palestine it was the country israel didn't exist no region of palestine it didn't it, it didn't have palestine there were palestine people living there just it like, wasn't a country okay. it was a region so humanitarian after the war after world war they're like we need a land for the jews that are you know they went through holocaust they and yes the world feels for them where the world cries for them the world bleeds for them okay they created a land or an area but then the greed of humanity showed mm. and just like how in russia you ukraine in sudan syria there's so many other places where you india always pakistan want more. So, no, but India Pakistan is completely different because they agreed to a land. Yes. Now, Pakistan has that land. India has the yeah. land. They're not like pushing the border and like trying to take they over are. the land. No, only Kashmir. Only Kashmir. See, that, that, that's a completely different thing. They're fighting over a territory that's not India or Pakistan. They're just fighting over some other land. In this, what's happening is Israel is pushing more and more and more and more and getting rid of the entire like if you go into any geographic map and look at it from 1948 the land that is now israel 80 98 percent was all palestine 98 percent was all palestine this is in 1948 what happened is and this is uh people might some might say a theory but this has been talked about and we've all saw this coming i'm going to talk about the terrorist that is israel and condemn both hamas and israel i condemn israel and hamas because this has been happening for a while when israel got his land they got the land in the nice looking area like the beaches area they got more but they really wanted the oil side they really wanted where the wealth is the arab money they didn't get that the side of west bank by the swiss canal and stuff that's where the oil is and they want to build their own canal to take away the trades that actually go there so they can have the entire route of trading for oil for goods for all of europe have the money that's a long-term plan what they've been doing is they've been attacking and they like people talk about gaza but what gaza really is is an uh, enclosed air like open air it's not a prison but it really is you can't say it's open a, air prison that's what it's called yeah it's called open air prison but i'm not people be like oh there's no bars or anything these people can't leave without proper documentation they and i was reading it that to get from one end of Gaza to the other end would take you 30 minutes by car. 
2 million people or more are in there. Now you have this control strip that you claim. So Hamas, how they are made. Every terrorist organization is funded by the wealthiest people. Just like in Iron Man, you see Tony Stark. I just saw it. Partner, yesterday. His own Again. partner is funding it and his own equipment is killing him and hurting the people. Same exact shit. United States funded Iran for Hamas, created that. Israel used Hamas for the agenda because when you push and start, keep on stepping, beating, hitting, doing all stuff to make one side suffer, you're just fueling the other side to retaliate, and it was inevitable. Anyone, bro, if you're hurting somebody of mine, and I'm just a typical human, I am going to see red. I I am going to see. I'm like, how are you going to? That's the mo. That's mine. Now think about how much you're doing, and you're basically putting your foot on somebody's throat, and this was inevitable. And I feel, I feel Israel planned for this. Not saying that they planned for Hamas to do this. I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into the conspiracy. But if I'm looking at it from the outside in, in a business point, especially if you want to get your agenda out there and how to do it, when you have everybody by the balls, by the fucking balls, yo. And what they did is, we're gonna push it and when they retaliate we're gonna be like see look at these motherfucking monsters fuck them all now yes in war there are gonna be casualties this is not a war a war is not one-sided is I mean, palestine and hamas do not have the weapons the people the amount of funds that Israel gets. Israel is getting $100 billion from the United States. $100 billion. Fucking our money. We don't get that shit. We don't have no healthcare here. Our homeless uh, uh, are still homeless. Uh, vets who fight for this country, they don't have any security. They have no fucking funds. They're treated like shit. There's so many issues. Fucking teachers, child care, child abuse. There's so much issues in this country that those hundred billion dollars can help here. But United States is so busy funding other people's wars, like Ukraine, like Israel, like just being up somebody. They fucking did this with Afghanistan. They did this shit with Iraq. They went in going like, we're gonna find WMD. Didn't find this. They overthrew the government. The government was actually stable. They got rid of their leaders, whatever you wanna call it, dictator. But who are you to judge, be the judge, jury, and executioner for fucking human life and just completely throw the world in chaos? They fucking had a 20 year war in Afghanistan, and when they left, the whole, the terrorists that you claim to be getting rid of took the entire fucking country back. Now, you're going into. It's like David versus Goliath. And the world knows this. The world is watching this. The world. Every time you say, and I have said this many times, free pastime. Yeah, I the reason why I'm saying is the real terrorist organization, which is Israel, is going to the lens and they're claiming it verbally. They're recording it. They're posting it that they want to get rid of all the Palestinians. They want to kill them. And it it baffles me that you went through the darkest time in history as Jews, where Hitler got rid of 5 million of you. He basically went to war to eradicate every single one. And you're doing the same exact shit. Genocide to innocent people because you claim terrorists that they not only bombed the world's oldest hospital, they bombed a refugee camp. And there's a video on both Blitzer 
interviewing one of the guys and he goes we thought hamas was there civilians are gonna die he goes that's the that's the tragedy of war how are you i i, I can't see any goodness in that it's not even fair and the fact that you're gonna try to justify the actions of what you started the, the effects you made and that effect caused this to happen and then well, those thousand deaths are already 10 times on the other side and it's all the innocent people dying like how are you how can anybody sit there and believe in god or goodness or any of that like when shit like this happens and i'm just sitting there and every time i scroll through this my media i'm just seeing sadness i was just seeing dark and there's been many moments where i'm just like i'm just not gonna see this and i'm just like i am so fucking weak i am so fucking weak they're people babies man i've seen headless babies i've seen babies without limbs i've seen dead babies i've seen so many things that when i sit down i just want to break down but then i'm numb and i'm just that i fear for the world i'm i i'm seeing the darkness i read and i truly know everything we're taught in history is a one-sided truth or a lie because history is written by the winner history is decided by the winning side we a new movie um about the osage murders killers of the flower moon came out it's based off a book uh osage tribe was the wealthiest native american tribe um in the early i would say 18 1900s maybe the late 1800s and they discovered oil on their land and they became a wealthy farming uh, family like the whole tribe the Osage tribe became very wealthy and all the whites in them they came and they tried to work for them one of them became friends and his plan was to instill his people the whites into the Osage break up the color and get that land that's what they did they killed hundreds and thousands of people and they just got rid of all the Osage just for the fucking land, the greed. And you've seen this happen in American history many times. That's how this country was made. And that's the exact course Israel's doing. And the fact that United States supports blood. <laughs> and there's so many interviews where Biden is fucking ask the questions and this dude is you could tell he knows what they're doing is wrong because when you're saying something and you ask you're asked a question you have a script right you're you're given the script you write the script this motherfucker is going off script because what he's thinking what he was trained to think and what he's probably feeling or something does not match so he's like Israel is not the victims here. Then he goes, no, Israel is the victim here. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know the damn truth. And again, like I say this, I have no hatred towards Jews. None whatsoever. There's so many Jews that are also on the same side where they like cease fire. Like legit. Cease fire. There, it, it, it's, you're trying to retaliate against a terror organization you basically fueled and gassed up you basically gave all the motive to you gave all the pain and suffering to you raise this like if you kill a kid's family right now he will spend his entire life going i'm gonna fucking find the killer of my family and that will spur up many 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 more now you're killing a thousand moms and dads thousand sons and daughters were raised of arm and this hatred and this 
war, this children of tragedy will continue and it will grow and they're just pinning on them that they're terrorists how can little babies be terrorists how uh, it, it's where is the humanity in that and my wife is very involved in this i mean who wouldn't be who wouldn't be involved in and i see how the humanity in her is dying is going away it, it's just that as a mother she's like seeing babies decapitated as a father i love fucking kids kids are the most incredible joyous infectious creatures annoying fucking creatures in the world that you love I mean, they're hardly they're but i don't annoying. have kids nope. they're annoying the best fucking way they're annoying mm, the way i where, like that they're annoying the best fucking way where you get frustrated with their stupidity but it just you cannot live a moment with your kids them. yeah of course and then you go on social media and you see these kids like today in one hour i saw insane amount this is one video and this couple of videos i'll talk about this one video of today where this boy who looks just shocked covered with dust and articles of building rubble everywhere has blood scratches everywhere but his eyes never broke and I'm a fucking weak ass. I'm just like, holy fucking shit. This kid is maybe a year or two stronger than I could ever be. I don't think you should consider yourself a weak ass. But when, when it comes to a situation like this, I see where you're coming from. Because it's not, it's, it's not human. This is, I don't even, I don't think animals would do things like that, right? It's not human. Uh, there has to be more. Anywho, uh, to be very honest. I, I'm pro peace at all costs. I can care less whose problem it is, but you have to be pro peace. There's multiple ways. And I I have I from whatever I have been seeing, I have a very different angle to this war. This is not this is a very geopolitical situation rather than a rather than a Israel um uh, Israel and Gaza. I'm not gonna say Israel and Palestine because this is not a Israel Palestine war. This is no, an Israel no. and Gaza war. No, West Bank it's too. It's not West, Israel Palestine. West Bank is completely West Bank close. is just in okay, so why did why was Gaza created from this is just coming from me, right? From what I'm just looking at, I by no means I'm an expert on this on this situation and by all means I'm pro peace. So regardless of either side or whatever um, I don't buy it. I, from what I understand, Gaza was created, the Gaza Strip was created, and the Hamas was basically created because Palestine and Israel, when it happened in the 1950s, when they were like, okay, this is Israel, this is Palestine, they both agreed on it. There were a bunch of people that they were like, you know what, we don't agree to this. We wanna, we wanna, we wanna completely uh, get rid of all the uh, all the Jews or what or Israel in that's per se. And those people became the Hamas Hamas side on the left hand side. Basically, that's what basically was the whole reason. Because Hamas and Palestine actually don't get along. Because Palestine doesn't really have a problem. You know, they're like, okay, it is what it is. We we understand. We accept it. Gaza folks didn't decide decided not to accept this. Now, putting all this argument aside, I have a question for you. What is the what is the issue between uh, Sunnis and Shias from back in the day? What what's what's the issue? It's um Sunnis uh, last prophet, the last messenger is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, where Shias also believe that, but they also consider Hazrat Ali as their last messenger and his teachings a little bit. Um, okay. Honestly speaking, religion is just a cult. No, no, that's fine. Now let me ask you the second question: which is which one is Shia and which one is Sunni in Saudi Arabia and Qatar in 
between these two. Saudi Arabia would be more Sunni, and Iran would be Sunni. More Shia. Qatar is Iran would be Qatar, Shia. Qatar, not Iran. Qatar. I'm talking about Qatar. I don't care about Iran at the moment. I'm talking about Qatar. Uh, it, it would be the it would be the opposite, right? Iran and also Iran. Actually, that's true. You're right. No, actually, Iran, Iran is, is Iran is Shia. Qatar is not. Okay, Qatar is not. Okay, so it's Iran basically. So yes. that's that's their that's their thing. Um, Saudi Arabia doesn't need funding. They have pretty good funding. But Iran and Qatar, who do they get the most funding from? Well, Qatar would get it from the Arab nation. Iran got it from United States. Let me tell you, have you heard of a country called China? I mean, China has money everywhere, though. It has money here, Not too. About United that. States. It, exactly. That, that's fine. But who are they literally funding their situations? It's not Saudi Arabia. We know that, right? Now, okay. My This is my perspective or understanding on a geopolitical level from what I have been looking at. China's initiative to build the belt. You've heard of the trading belt or the Silk Road belt that they are trying to build, right? From all the way from China to Europe, right? Yeah. So what is the countermeasure to that? Like if China wants to do that and so they're, they're covering that. So India, India had proposed a countermeasure in the G20. I don't know if you heard of that. Okay. The, the strait that goes from, from India through the sea route and it goes through right between that that little area where Saudi Arabia is, uh, Qatar, Iran, yeah. and um, that area. That's the counter strategy to that, right? Now, for over the years, Iran and Saudi Arabia have been fighting the oil dominance war for a very long time. I'm sure you've heard of that, right? So if that happens, and if the ports and that goes through Saudi Arabia, Iran will lose the dominance of the oil nation right okay does that make sense right and you have you have basically you have basically a counter strategy to start a situation where can you start a situation where it will it will genuinely stop this this um uh, you know this new g20 idea that us is very happy about that is going to counter the chinese belt going to the to the thing What's the best option geopolitically looking at? Where would you cause a problem where you know for a fact that if this problem is still alive, this won't happen? This India's new initiative that they're talking through the sea route is the Gaza and the Israel Strip. Now, also talking about Hamas, where does Netanyahu live? Where does he Israel. genuinely reside? Israel. Where does the Hamas re leader live? Uh, West Bank. Qatar. No, West Bank. Google it. I'm telling you, West Bank. I'm telling yeah. you, they're in Qatar. They have been living in Qatar for for the longest so, time, bro. I'll tell you. Not this right the now. Hamas. Not the Hamas. Not the Hamas leader who started this. Not him. He. I feel bad for him because he just had a hard life, and then he went and joined in the Brotherhood, right? Yeah. But if you're talking about the Hamas leader, like the main leader or the one that they look at, he lives in Qatar, bro. So you're, you're telling me that you smell you, Haiti, that he's been. You know, so you're telling Gaza. me you're telling yeah. me that Netanyahu is living in U.S. and he's starting a war in Israel, or literally that's what you're saying. So how does that make any sense that that you're living in a different country and your own countrymen are gonna start a war with another country, which you very well know is gonna retaliate? So I'm still a little confused. That okay, why? How is that even? Forget about being fair. How is that even logical? As simple as that. No, but I mean, Shidu, it's not even that. Hamas was created in 1987. It was not created in right. 1948. When, when, when did they accept Israel and Palestine? 1950. 1948. 1948. Okay, 1948. Bill Clinton, or not Bill Clinton, the not other even, dude, uh, he made that happen. This the is US after war, this after World War Two. This is after World War Two. They would decide about this. Hamas was created in 1987. Okay. It was created as a resistant group to fight and combat this, supported by Iran. Iran supported the money that was funded by United States to Iran. Iran used that money to fund this. Hamas is one side that is trying to rebel. They think they're revolutionary and they're trying to do that. 
the leader of Hamas, that one of Ishmael, whatever his name is, yes, he does reside in Qatar and all these other countries. He's not there. I don't know about anything about China or anything, but I do know the ongoing thing for over 20 years of my life. Right. Some shit was always going to go down. And I already know, that's why every single, if you ask anybody that has been paying attention to this Palestine thing for years, you're thinking China. And I'm telling you, you're very wrong. And I'm not saying China. I'm saying I'm looking at it as a, you're looking at one issue. I'm looking at the issue. Why is this war started? I'm not talking about, because uh, two inevitable. years ago, it was inevitable. The, two years ago, Israel went into one of the mosques and they uh, shot with like, what do you call those they've pellets been doing and stuff this for like a that? They time. bombed and stuff. Yes, they've been doing yeah, this exactly. for a long time. Exactly. So what, what am I, my thing is what triggered this? Like what really triggered this? You know, cause, cause, uh, I'm, that I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not disbanding what, what has happened and nor I'm saying that Gaza was, um, you know, did anything wrong either side. I'm not saying either side is wrong. I'm not even saying either side is right. I'm pro peace. You know what I mean? Genuinely, I'm pro peace because this is inhumane is what's happening. Doesn't matter who's doing on which side is doing it. But why did it trigger now? What was the reason to what is the root cause? If, if you're it, saying I the root causes was, they were just suppressed, well, they have been suppressed for this whole time. So I, I don't see a reason that you know it what caused it now. This was the biggest attack they have had. Uh, okay, there have been multiple attacks also, but biggest I don't, attack I don't, Israel I, has gotten. This is the biggest attack on Israel. Your 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 yes. Palestine has been suffering for a long time. Israel has not. This is the first time they did. And Netanyahu's ego, because right before that, Israel was about to go into a civil war. Within themselves? Yes. Okay. Look, yes, look. I've heard of the right wing and all that stuff, right? That their own thing, because Netanyahu's brother is also the director of defense or something like that. So there was going to be changes and they wanted changes there's a lot of israelis that do not support this there was going to be a civil war there was a whole uprising there was going to be deals of saudi arabia and israel signed there's going to be many things that will have many moving parts the inevitable part that i keep coming back to everybody saw this coming a mile away we just didn't know when we didn't know where we didn't know who we just knew it would happen because when you push, 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 push. Yeah, one yeah way it's another, about to bounce out. Blow one up, way or another. Any day. But we yeah. also all knew the power and support Israel has is like we were talking about. Remember J Javed Iqbal, the rich dude mm -hmm. that raped and killed mm -hmm. and had money and he walked through it? That's exactly what is happening in this situation. But only now is they knew if it ever came to this part, and I guarantee they all predicted it, they knew it. We will retaliate and we will use this and go, look, look, they're the monsters. We're the victims. We got bombed. What did we do? Now, all those videos that I've watched, all the articles that I've read, I can turn the switch on and be like, look, this is what happened. This is what happened. I seen this stage coming. I seen this step. I saw the path and I knew it was going to happen. You could be right where Israel's like, you know what? I, I'm just looking at a different angle. I, I have by no means uh, an expert on geopolitics or something, but I like to see what's what's not there, and that's where that's where I was like, this could be a possibility. Granted that 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 was already a hot pot, but it you know it's kind of like what actually triggered it. You know what I mean? And and if you are so hatred over something like that, would you would you leave your own men to start this fight and live in a different country as a luxury of person? Of course, Modi. You know, I was kind of like, what do you mean? Modi doesn't stay in, he never gives his speeches in his country. He's always out of the country doing other stuff. 
All the rice no, that happened he, in Gujarat. He, he the lives rice, in India, though. The rice he lives that, in India, bro. The rice that happened in Gujarat when he was the leader of Gujarat, he was not there. He his party started all that stuff. He funnels it, even though he's not there. He funnels the hate. He funnels the pain. It goes through his party. It goes through his word of mouth. The way he speaks. Trump did that shit over here. Trump fucking funneled the hatred. Use religion. It's many ways you could do that. If you have political power and you have hatred in your followers' hearts and beliefs, you could bring that out. Just yeah, I maybe maybe you you're definitely right in that space, but I I but I I don't think any of these people's residence is outside of their country, except surprisingly in this case for Hamas. That guy's always been living out there, so it, you know, and his his argument is that he's making he's making uh, good connections and stuff like that. So the brotherhood that they call it, you know, because all the brotherhoods are kind of different in every country in that space, right? Can can survive and strive, but he lives in uh, amazing luxury and everything like that. Now again, I'm just looking at it at a different angle. Regardless of whatever happens, I'm still pro peace. I'm not okay with it's just inhumane man like you're talking about you're talking about that you're weak that you're seeing all these things bro i'm weak enough to not even look at it i pass through it you know what i mean when i see these things i, I know i can't it, it will affect me in a much different level that i'm not even willing to see it that's what it is you, you know, know what i mean you know, the biggest, that shows how much privilege and entitlement you have i was doing the same thing and this is why i say i'm weak I, I still watch all the videos. I still watch all the pictures. Because I'm going to remember them. Yeah, and I watch both, okay? Whenever I do watch, I watch Al Jazeera. I watch, uh, you know, all both the sites to see what, what each one is saying. And then I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like with all due respect, it's, it, they both are one-sided from their side. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of like, I'm not getting caught into this for the minute. Let me try to see what's out there in a, on don't, a lick, don't, lick zoom out and look at it. Don't look at the media giants. You only no, 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 not just not just media giants. I I look at snippets. I look at each and every random stuff. You know, I don't I don't pick and choose. I I see what's out there. I ingest it, and then I'm like, okay, what is what makes sense here? Then you try to zoom out. You also zoom in, but sometimes you have to zoom all the way out to kind of get an idea. And you're kind of like, wow, this this is very, very inhumane. Whatever is it's, happening is just it's not right. Is greed by one side. It's just not right. So look, like you were saying, Hamas's leader is outside living in another country doing this. It's just the point I'm making. I'm, I'm just not but, okay with it. But I'm coming know? back to square one. 1948, Israel Palestine. Israel push, push, push. 1987, the creation of Israel is Hamas. Hamas only exists because of Israel. They were created to counter Israel. 1987, they were created. This is many years after that. So when I was saying, when you kill innocent kids, parents, family, siblings, their hatred is going to be born. They're going to grow with that, pass it to their offsprings, their family, friends, whoever. That's what's going to fuel future terrorists. Yes, if you commit murder, what Hamas did was a terror act. Either side, either side, doesn't matter. What Israel's doing and has been doing is an act of terrorism. War no. crimes, actually. They have done many war crimes, okay? There's there's such thing as, there's things where they're untouchable. Hospital, refugee camp, anything that has supports and helps innocent people, you cannot touch. These motherfuckers not only bomb the hospital, the oldest hospital. This hospital is over 100 years old, before Israel was even there on that land. Over 100 years old, this hospital, they bombed. And first what they said, Hamas rocket misfired. Hamas doesn't have those weapons. It doesn't have the white phosphorus. It doesn't have those big ass fucking missiles. They don't have that. 
then when the information came out from other sites where the rockets were launched from they fucking were showing pictures and the timestamps weren't matching they were from before mm. they didn't have they didn't they didn't have, they couldn't even cover this story guess what they admitted it that they ended up bombing it same thing with refugee camp they're like oh we don't know what happened then truth comes out they couldn't cover it oh yeah we ended up bombing it yeah civilians were there this is the act of war i feel like one side is screaming stop and the, the other side is screaming nah we're not done yet and that's the tragedy of the world that some people are completely fine with people dying it's just not I, I don't know it i can't understand how people can make those decisions i mean with all due respect that's why i'm probably not in the military um because i get too logical in situations i get too emotional um you know and over there you just have to follow orders it doesn't matter one man's uh, terrorist is another man's so another country See, soldier if, if i get to, mad or whatever to make it fair to but, make it fair get all the zionist israelis get all the hamas and nuke them <laughs> i think I mean, that's fair that that makes yeah that's like getting all the radicals on from both the sides and just you know take just do it but i don't know man it's it's extremely depressing to see that this is happening in today's time where we have media we have all of this and we're still we're just still like letting this happen is what is just what is not right you know and then when someone does talk about stuff like that that you need to stop doesn't matter who or what people are like this is geopolitics you don't understand it's supposed to be done on a very high level yeah high level where those people are sitting on you know in their luxury homes and making these billion dollar deals and stuff like that and and you just have these innocent people who just follow them because they think they're their leader um you know who's doing good for them but in all, all the honesty they're just scapegoating them you know they're, they're just it's playing like bloodbath chess uh you know on the floor and just enjoying from a different side like wow you know it's it's like when you said right like if there were god he would make sure this stops you know what i mean like what what is your justification also another thing i was looking into uh, and this goes back exactly where you're talking about that you know they pass on to the generation when the hatred is suppressed that much like i was looking at the the person who actually um did the hamas uh, attack on israel like the the one who organized or whatever it is apparently that guy was detained for no reason like back in the day by the israels or whatever when he was younger and stuff like that he was just a student so he was detained by them like multiple times and tortured and stuff right yeah then he decided to go back to the gaza side and start uh, and join the brotherhood you know he, he studied and everything and he joined the brotherhood and for no reason or whatever there was a bomb attack that had happened uh, that they tried to he escaped it seven times he, he, you know seven or nine times they call him like the the some kind of cat or something like that and in one of them his his wife and his kids kids died and that was it which i'm sorry any person would go down to that level because from what i understand of what the history or whatever his life says that this guy and i think he turned paraplegic or or he definitely had some handicap situation but you suppress someone so much for no reason whatsoever and in the end you end up losing your family you know what i mean is going to make you is going to make you what you're going to do so what you're saying i kind of agree with that but the question is who is who is making the shots who's making these calls who's making him the leader it's not the hamas people it's the leader of hamas putting him in that position to use it against in this situation as revenge or whatever it is but the question is if you knew if that was going to happen then you also knew that they were going to retaliate you know what i mean so you cleverly 
have been living in a different country so you're making all these shots and stuff like that but at the end of the day even a, a or b happens you're still gonna be safe sitting in qatar i i i don't i, I don't see that any you know like human you know what i mean like it's just i don't know i it i'm very very like um depressed at this whole situation by general you know in, in general doesn't matter whichever side it's just sad it's very sad so anywho but yeah i if you say that i'm much more weaker than you because i can't even view any of that i i just can't view it yeah but there's the one dying and suffering they're the ones who's yeah living it i feel extremely privileged by not even you know feeling it feeling the heat for a privilege we are alive we get to hug um, our partners we get to just feel secure and then you know there's millions of people that probably aren't even breathing right now don't have a bed don't have home don't have food are suffering um shit like that this i think there's a civil war happening in sudan right now there's a happening other places in south america um and and what you said about the hospitals and stuff like that bro uh just to let you know that that's not limited war or no war in cyber warfare we we see this all the time in fact there is a lady in defcon she comes and she has a pacemaker on her thing and she actually literally turns off the pace she hacks the pacemaker and she turns it off herself she has a nurse on on the uh you know on the uh, next to her on the stage that she's trying to explain that you know um these attacks that they're having the cyber attacks that they have in u.s hospitals and stuff like that they have patients there with pacemakers too if that malware or any of this that happens you can literally kill a, a literally whole ward of people by cyber attacking them without yeah. even them knowing yeah. so so when we talk about warfare that oh you know one or the other is doing the hospital is just horrible nobody does that it's still happening bro in the cyber warfare it's a very common practice so, it, it, you know, this is you seeing the bomb falling and stuff like that. It's still killing people either or side. You know what I mean? Now, granted that these cyber attacks, a lot of them are happening from uh, China. They happen from North Korea or whatever. But it's so unfortunate that it, anywhere in the world, everybody knows you don't touch hospitals. You don't touch kids. You don't do any of that. But guess what? It happens. It's real. You know what I mean? It's as real as possible look at certain documentaries on um north korea and some of the museums that north korea has north korea has is where they show american soldiers decapitating babies and playing football with their heads like these are their museums this is what their their kids are taught this is how they're growing up and this is you know been happening since the time this has happened you know like they have museums of like uh, uh, what do you call statues that show them paintings that show them doing stuff like this and like it, it's extremely horrific and stuff like that you know so when i see situations like why why do north korean hates americans is because of that and in all due respect the truth was is just because they took the south korean side and not the north korean side everybody knows that but in north korea what are they taught they're taught that this is what American soldiers well, came here and North did Korea, that. Well, North Korea is a dying country. Um, That's not I, the point. The point is, the point is, in North Korea, living in North Korea, life is hell granted. Oh, yeah. And they blame U.S. for it. You know what I mean? You Which should, everybody uh, knows you that. Should look, no, you should look into um, Yomi Park. She escaped North Korea. With yeah, I've, I've, I've heard her podcast. It's just it's just horrific it's yeah but anyways what i mean to say is that i'm not just taking like one side or one issue it, this is an issue that has been happening for a while but this time it's it's been pretty bad you know what i mean it's just horrible you take issues in the past that because we didn't have social media or anything like that you didn't even hear about it like for example the monster of lahore I had no clue about this dude, man. I never heard of it well, or anything. When I saw it, I was like, compared to this. you know, 1999 to it's not, but it's of course, it, there's always someone who's going to beat the top. You know what I mean? There's that's going to make themselves evil. look 
yeah, exactly. There's always going to be that bigger evil, but it is it is very sad to to see this that we live in this world today and we're seeing this with our own eyes and in many cases honestly what really bothers me is that i'm helpless that i cannot do anything i genuinely cannot do anything you know i i that makes me even more well, sad the people that have died we mourn for them we grieve for them yes. It's for 1,400 them. people killed from Israeli side. Innocent people. We mourn for them. We grieve for them. 9,061 Palestinians till now. Ever since then. All we want is How many to kids and women percentage-wise? 70%. 70-70%. Of 9,000. Innocent lives. Si that Innocent. That means 6,000 kids and females have died. To the point where they were saying that I don't think many kids from this school year are going to survive for one of the schools. Uh, we could talk about this topic forever. It's yeah. But I don't want to like hope the solution is just fucking kill Netanyahu, kill the fucking Hamas leader, kill all the fucking terrorists. Just get rid of that. Honestly, that's my solution. Get rid radicals. of all the radicals, extremists, and radicals. Your whichever religion, country, what caste, whatever you are. It's just, fucking just wild stop. that two people get to decide the lives of ten thousand. Yeah, that's what. That's exactly. That's exactly is the sad part. You know what? That's exactly the sad part. I I guess I don't know. That uh, pray for the world, man. We just want a ceasefire. We just want no more bloodshed. We don't want any anybody dying. It just we we want to watch stupidity on social media. Like I go on social media to get laughs or see something like i like to see anime yeah. shit i like to hear podcast shit i like to see Pranks. sports sure. i LD like to prank. see yeah i that's what for me social media is it's memories and just stupidity it has turned into a propaganda uh, bulletin you know reality it's painful and it just when you see like uh, it, my kids cry, they're brats, they cry about stupid shit. But then I sit there and I'm just like, man, the tears of the kids over there. Can't even imagine. Uh, yeah, this has been our topic on Israel and Palestine. It's actually Israel and Hamas. This is a war versus them. Palestinians are suffering as are Israelis. One side is bleeding more than the other doesn't mean the other side doesn't bleed. We just need the blood to stop. Yeah. I think Absolutely. That's the best part. And we just need Joe Biden to go into his grave already. Fucking old I ass. I don't know about that. Old With ass all piece of respect, shit. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm not that involved into American politics or politics in general. I um, voted for that I, bastard. I, just... I voted for that motherfucking old piece of shit. And that old motherfucker has probably been awake for maybe 5% of his entire presidency. Trump definitely did more shit than he did. That's a different fucking topic. But it sucks that the United States election is going to be these two old motherfucking grandfathers running for the country. Like, we're trying to be young, but let's elect senior citizens. Like... I have a question. You you follow the politics, right? To There's that Indian dude. I forgot his name. Vivek uh, Vivek uh, Ramdan, whatever. Yeah, he got yeah, my vote. Whatever. You think he's good? Uh, like uh... none of them good. None of them good. He only has my vote right now because he's neither pro Israel or pro Palestine. Like he's not pro, and he's keeping his mouth shut. And everybody else is sucking dick, deep throating, <laughs> hardcore, fucking choking on Israel's cock. Every single one. 
and the fact that and there's so many people that are coming out and saying it that their media influencers from Israel side where they like come over there is like a timeshare they're selling a timeshare like oh we're gonna give you this money or this land or you're gonna come spend over here don't say shit about us and there are other people like there's like uh, influencers that are talking are pro Palestine and uh, Palestinian they're showing all these emails coming through they're like oh we'll pay you five thousand dollars if you you know support us and stuff it's a lot of business propaganda happening mm. War is business, though. War is business. It's as simple as that. So that's what I'm saying. And, and at, at what cost? At what cost? That's that's the that's well, the, the cost scary of human part. life. The cost of it, human life. Yeah, innocent human lives. It happens to be. Anyways. Yeah. Oh, that was could, very heavy, man. Very. We could heavy. keep going to this. Like, subscribe. Yes. Up to you. Whatever. But free Palestine. Free the innocent. Free ceasefire. Peace. It's legit just free the people that just want to live yes everybody yes. deserves a future fight. everyone no. deserves a life everyone deserves to make a choice in their let's not be judged during an executioner yeah i should do this was something wow. yeah it was absolutely